Look, it's no secret that most Pacific Island leaders would like Australia to do more on climate change. They'd like to see steeper cuts to Australia's own emissions. On top of that, some Pacific leaders are very uneasy about the fact that Australia continues to expand its coal and gas exports at a time of climate crisis. So there's no doubt that Pacific Island leaders would like Australia to do more. But at the same time, there's a couple of other things going on. One, in some Pacific nations, there's a recognition that Australia isn't going to be able to turn this ship around easily. So there's a, there's a level of understanding there. And two, there's also a dependency which remains on Australia for a number of things, including finance development, uh, loans in some cases, security assistance, and of course, help with dealing with the impacts of climate change. So for all of those reasons, Pacific Island nations are often reluctant to criticise Australia publicly on its climate policies, uh, particularly perhaps most recently under the Labor government. All of that said, uh, some Pacific leaders get around that particular quandary by phrasing their criticisms in very general terms. So, for example, you had Papua New Guinea's uh, Deputy Prime Minister today saying that all nations that are developed, uh, including Australia, need to do more. So trying not to single out Australia, but still sending the message that they'd like to see more ambition. Meanwhile, Stephen, Australia doesn't seem to be throwing its weight behind a regional push to revitalise the Treaty of Rarotonga. What's driving this? Yeah, this is an interesting push that we've seen. Some Pacific Island leaders say that it's time to revise the Treaty of Rarotonga. That's the landmark anti-nuclear treaty that was signed in the 80s, designed to keep the South Pacific a nuclear-free zone. Now, some leaders say, given you've got some changes recently, you've seen Japan's move to discharge wastewater into the Pacific from the Fukushima plant, uh, the fact that you've got continuing issues over remediation from nuclear tests, and, of course, most recently, you've got Australia's push to develop nuclear-powered submarines under the AUKUS Pact. Now, some Pacific leaders say, given all of that, it's time for the Treaty of Rarotonga to be revised or revitalised in some way. And that's something that Pacific leaders are going to look at while they're having their leaders retreat on Aitutaki. Uh, but perhaps unsurprisingly, uh, Australia's not enthusiastic about that. Uh, it's very wary about anything that might make its life more difficult under the Treaty of Rarotonga, particularly when it comes to nuclear-powered submarines. So the Prime Minister gave that idea pretty short shrift today, simply saying that Australia supports the current wording of the, uh, of the Treaty of Rarotonga, signalling that Australia has no real interest in reopening that question. And some of the leadership tensions which have spilled out in the forum seem to rear up again today. What's the latest on that front? Yeah, leadership has been a bit of a fraught question for some members of the Pacific Islands Forum uh, over the last couple of years, particularly in the wake of the so-called PIF split, which saw Micronesian nations essentially break off from the Pacific Islands Forum because they felt that they hadn't been given their fair turn at the leadership. Now, as part of a deal to basically end the PIF split, a uh, former president of Nauru, Baron Wonga, uh, was uh, nominated earlier this year to be the next Secretary General of PIF. Now, that idea has been controversial in some quarters, and particularly some Polynesian nations felt like the process where that nomination came forward was a little bit unclear and a, a little bit unfortunate. So what happened today is they said that that process should be examined by the leaders. That drew an angry reaction from Nauru in particular. You saw the president essentially walk out as a result of that uh, because he felt, uh, perhaps unfairly, that uh, some of the Polynesian nations were reneging on that agreement or trying to block Baron Wonga from the top, uh, from the top gig. So this really does illustrate it's a fraught reaction, a fraught area still for, uh, for Pacific Island nations. Uh, David Adiang, the president of Nauru, has not shown up at the leaders' retreat in Aitutaki, which demonstrates that this is still an awkward and live question. I think it probably will be resolved and smoothed over over the coming two days, but it's a reminder of how raw some of these wounds over leadership still remain within the forum.